I bring you greetings in Jesus' name. I'm Sunday O Academy. And this evening, I have a word of God for you. It is titled, When Money Fails. When Money Fails. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 19, and particularly 19c towards the end, he said, Money assert all things. Money assert all things. Money is the reason for living by most people. A lot of people live strictly for the purpose of making money. Most works are done just because you want to get money out of the things you are doing. And, uh, and the joy of a lot of people is, or the joy or the sadness of so many people is determined by how much money they are able to acquire or gather together. Some get fat or, or slim or small, depending on the amount of money that they have. That's no one that the Bible says where we already say money answers all things. Money put foods on your table. Money pays school fees for your children. Money buy clothes for your body. Money build houses. It buy cars. Money meets so many needs. Money makes a lot of friends. The Bible told us if you have money, you will make a lot of friends. It attracts a lot of followers. When you have money, a lot of people follow you just because you have money. When people control much money, it shows in their looks, it shows also in their posture when they control money. It shows in the amount of people that follow them. It excites me whenever a politician is uh, in position and if the father dies or the mother dies, you see the whole world we gather. But when the man is out of position, he no longer has money, have money. You see people we no longer gather like that if his father or mother dies. Because people are pursuing money. 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 Money makes many people to be also negative on the other side. Money makes many people to be proud. Money makes many people to be arrogant. Money makes a lot of people to be, you know, to undermine others who are poor and money Money controls a lot of people. Money has power to control people. Money misleads a lot of persons to do all kinds of things. No wonder the Bible told us that a lot of people are falling to the love of money. And the Bible says in 1 Timothy 6 verse 10, the love of money is the root of all evil. Imagine how much evils are perpetrated all over the world simply because of money, particularly in Africa, third world nations. All the armed robberies we are seeing is strictly because of money, nothing else. I was in Japan and I saw that all their houses, there are no fences, everybody just living freely, no, no armed robbery. But come to Nigeria, armed robberies are everywhere because of money. Kidnapping is all over the places because of money. Assassination is everywhere strictly because of money. That somebody can kill, take money to kill another person because he was giving money to have blood money and the blood of the person killed will follow, pursue that person and destroy the person as well. People are doing all kinds of, just for money making. Corruption in the high places and in low places, all for money's sake. Bribery and corruption, every of these things, cheating and, you know, you see, a terrible things are being done because of money. People are doing to, are into stealing, people are into ritual killings, all because of the love for money. The love for money is terrible. If I recently people are said to die by suicide bombing just to leave some money for their loved ones who are still alive. They die. Can you see how money rules the world? Money rules the world. But then there are a few things you need to know that this same money fails. Money can fail you. Money is, a, is an instrument that should not be totally dependent upon. So I'm going to tell you five things about how money can fail. And how meaningless money can be. Number one, money is meaningless to the sick and to the diseased. Money is meaningless to the sick and the diseased. You know, you never know how useless money is until you are too sick to make use of money. Or you have a disease that ravages your body and money becomes useless to you. In that instance, money has failed. Money makes no sense when you have no appetite. To eat food. Money makes no sense when you can no longer go comfortably on that car you bought with excessive money. You, you can no longer sit on it. You can no longer enjoy yourself because of sickness. 
Money makes no sense when your body is ravaged with sicknesses. You, even the immorality you are using money to sponsor you. You will see a woman like this, you, see, you can't sleep with her. You see a man like this, you can no longer sleep with him because money has destroyed, I mean, the, the, the sickness has destroyed you. So what are we saying? That you're, when, you, when you go blind, money is useless to you. When you are deaf and dumb, money is useless to you. When you are crippled, you can no longer go. Money becomes nonsense. There are sicknesses money can never cure. And they kill their carriers and money becomes useless. That's one way you know that money is, is, is can fail. Money can fail. The second way you know money can fail is that the dead cannot control money again. So people live as if they will never die in their acquisition and desire to make money. We watch with dismay how money of the rich develop wings and fly away. I've seen a lot of people, they make so much money, but when they eventually die, their children, their relations who don't know how to make money, pack, scatter this money and waste the whole money away, and the money develop wings and disappear from the family. Most of the richest people of the world today die without anyone remembering their wealth. The richest man in, in, in 1910, who is the person? The richest man in 1840, who is the person? Nobody talks about them again because they are dead, they are, their wealth is gone with them. All the people we are celebrating today are they are very wealthy. In another hundred years, nobody talks about them. Money, money fails. Money fails. I want you to know that. Money fails. Then number three. Money is valueless when not used to aid the poor. When you don't use your money to aid the poor, money is valueless when not used to aid the poor. Most wealthy Nigerians don't spend their money, I mean, on the poor. This is where we have a lot of problems. Or like some foreign you know, developed countries like America, like Britain and some of these developed Europe, you see they spend money to assist the poor. But in Nigeria, we have so many of our wealthy people, most of who stole government money and they queried themselves, and nobody is querying how they got the money. You found that these people, they don't spend money on the poor. And that makes the money to the to the money you develop you got to be valueless, to be unproductive, and to be useless. Because the expectation is for one to be, you know, wealthy in order to be a blessing to people. If you want to be wealthy, Father, I've discovered that the secret to become wealthy in God's way, to be wealthy in righteousness, not by stealing, not by ritual killing, not by uselessness. If you really want to be wealthy, the secret to wealth is to have a desire to help the poor. That was what made uh, a Job to be wealthy. I saw it in the Bible in Job chapter 29, that Job became wealthy in verse 13 because he was helping the poor. But we are living in a society where the, they have, a lot of people have so much money and there's so much suffering. The wealth of this country is in less than 10% of Nigerians. And these 10% that are holding the money, they help nobody. Once your wealth is not beneficial to the poor, that money has failed. You are not worthy, you are not worth your wealth. If your wealth is not beneficial to the poor, you are not worth that wealth. Many rich people don't know this truth. And we are saying it clear that money fails. Number four. You cannot serve God and money. You cannot serve God and money. Jesus said, you cannot serve God and money. In Luke 16, verse 13. Whatever takes the position of God in your life is your God. And to many people, what takes the first position in their life is money. Not it does, not it takes the position of God in the life of people more than money. Most people are more loyal to money pursuit than to God's pursuit. The way you pursue money, do you pursue God like that? If you pursue God like that, then even God himself will give you the money. You love money more than God? It's terrible. How do we know you love money more than God? Let me tell you a few examples. For example, if you are more punctual to your place of making money than to your place of serving God, you love money more than God. If you are more punctual to work and you are always late to church, it means you love God. You love money more than God. That's how, number one. If you spend more time at work daily than you spend with God, you can spend eight hours with, with work, but you can't spend even eight hours with God in a whole day. Morning, afternoon, evening, throughout the night, you have no time to spend with God. Then you love money more than God. And then if you do anything 
to displease God in order to get money. It means you love money more than God. If you do anything to displease God, for example, stealing. If you steal, you are displeasing God. And if you steal because you want to have money, it means that you love money more than God. If you tell lies because you want to have money, you love money more than God. If you cheat on anybody because you want to have money, it be, and you know God hates cheating, you love money more than God. If you quarrel with people because of money, it means you love money more than God. If you fight with anybody because of money, it means you love money more than God. Because God hates fighting, quarreling, cheating, lying, stealing and all of those things the 40 the 50 you must know money mongers will be mourners in hell money mongers will be mourners in hell what do i mean by that money mongers all those who are actually all, all out for money and they prefer money than anything god they will end up in hell because the bible teaches us very clearly that there is heaven and there is hell the Bible told us in Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to 24, I will not be able to read all of it, that there was a certain rich man, that this man, he had so much money, was clothed in purple and fine linen, fairly sub he fed subjustly every day. But there was another man, a beggar, named Lazarus, full of sores, who was late at his gate. The Bible told us that this poor man feeds from the rich man's table. But when they finally die, because that man loved money, more than God, he died and went to hell. The poor man died, he loved God and went to heaven. Now, let me put this clear, it's not the will of God that anybody should be poor, so the Bible never teaches poverty. I'm only telling you that this man was poor, not because if he was rich, he would not go to heaven. The Bible didn't say so. But then we are saying that here was the man who lost money, another one who lost God. When they both died, they both went to, one went to hell, one went to heaven. The one that went to heaven, beautiful. The one that went to hell, he regretted that he spent all his lifetime enjoying himself. Only to discover that money filled him. He discovered, the rich man discovered that money filled him. When you are using all your life to struggle for money, you soon discover that money will fail you. He went to hell because he was lover of money now before i round up, i'd like you to know that there are two types of life everyone should have there is a life of the flesh there's a life of the spirit when your mother gave birth to you gave you the life of the flesh and you were carrying that life and because of the sin of adam everybody have only the life of the flesh jesus came to cancel that sin of adam about dying on the cross and resurrecting on the on the on the third day and he said whosoever call upon the name of the lord shall be saved when you say jesus come into my life the life of the spirit that died in the garden of eden when adam and him sinned against god that life will be restored to you you are watching me now you know you don't have the life of the spirit your spirit man is dead before this program rounds up. I like to beg you in the name of the Lord. It's only not to have the life of the flesh. You need the life of the spirit. Just ask Jesus to come into your life. And until this happens, you will not know that money can. You will not know how to live a life that is different from pursuing money. But when you have Jesus in your life, then you can balance how to search for money and how to live for God. So I challenge you this, this evening that you should give your life to Jesus Christ. And if you want to sincerely give your life to Jesus, because he said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Nobody goes to the Father except by me, John 14 verse 6. If you want to give your life to Jesus, I'd like you to just put your hand on your chest and say this after me. Say, Father, I come to you today as a sinner. My spirit has been dead and I want it to come alive. I believe in Jesus. He died and rose again and he lives forever. I will serve Jesus all the days of my life. Father, thank you for taking away my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you have said that short prayer with me, I'd like to assure you that you are born again. And when you are born again, you begin to read the Bible. You can balance the search for money and the search for God. You will make God to be uppermost in your heart. If you don't know God, you can never make God the uppermost in your heart. You will be, again, keep looking for money that will fail you. Don't forget I told you, money fails. But when you have Jesus in your life, as a number of you have prayed with me now, then you can balance the search for money with a view that when you leave this, this evil world, you will we will make heaven. God bless you really good. And I want to thank every one of you that have been listening to us on the television. God bless you really good. But just before we round up, I have this 
great 